So the last paper that you'll sit for your A-level economics is paper three. Uh, the title is micro and macroeconomics. So as the name suggests, this paper is testing both micro and macro. Uh, there's a mixture of uh, both types of question. Uh, exam length is two hours. There's 100 marks. So the idea is that you're going to spend um, 20 minutes reading the source material. And then from then on, it's about a mark a minute from there. Um, the main thing that I would say about this paper is that you, you're you expected to use knowledge from all four themes. So um, it really does... Um, it really just sort of rewards students who've got a really good subject knowledge who can quickly identify the relevant economic concept that the examiner wanted to test when they wrote the question. And also it, it benefits students who can see uh, links between topics, uh, even topics that are in different um, themes. Uh, so let's have a look at this paper. A bit more detail. Um, yeah, so 100, 100 marks, 120 minutes. So there are two questions. Question one, question two. Um, so quest this, this first question is about the market for coffee bars. So you've got um, a pie chart showing market share. And another chart showing uh, growth of uh, Starbucks. Um, some information on prices. They want you to use this information, so you know you've got to use that 20 minutes reading time really well. Um, you also need to work hard at developing your your ability to comprehend uh, numerical and written information quickly. Um, this is a skill that can only be uh, acquired through practice. It's not something that you can revise at the last minute. So the students that spend all their time computer gaming or on social media are going to really struggle with this paper. Um, because they're, just, they're not going to be able to, even if they have good knowledge, they're, they're going to struggle to apply it because they're just not going to really understand what's going on in the extract. On the other hand, students... Um, that do have good uh, comprehension and data analysis skills will fare better as will students who have got a decent background knowledge um, because the topics that they tend to pick for the exam um, that they're all they've all been in the news there's nothing um, too out of the ordinary but I'm constantly amazed at the number of students these days that sort of seem to have lived with Osama bin Laden inside the cave in Tora Bora who who don't really know much about the world beyond um, their front door because <clears throat> they don't equate themselves with it so um, if you want to get a low grade um, stay inside the cave if you want to get a good grade then start reading watching and listening the news listening to the news and also get out and about whilst you're walking about think about what you're seeing and try to apply economics to it see if you can figure out what's going on in this really interesting place called the world anyway so um, extract a is about Starbucks it's in the news a lot um, you know, particularly about um, competition issues um, tax avoidance issues um, globalization then we've got some sort of green stuff about uh, recycling coffee cups some kind of uh, or putting a tax on them you know etc co2 emissions um extract c uh, is um yeah really about like regulation and uh, what a city in germany is you doing to help cut the use of uh, coffee cups okay so a lot of text, first of all, there's a hell of a lot of material that you're expected to read through here. Um, so there's two questions, 20 minutes reading time. So you've got to ask yourself, could you absorb and fully understand all of that material in 10 minutes? You need to develop your reading skills. 
and you can only develop those skills through practice. Anyway, let's look at the questions. So, uh, question 1A is an explain for five marks. So, let's have a look at the mark allocation here. So, this question, it's not marked according to a levels of response. You've got um, two marks for knowledge, two marks for application, one mark for analysis. Um, an easy way to drop marks here would be not making any reference um, to the extracts or the data. So um, you can see here that that's what's needed to score those uh, two application marks. So um, that's 1A. 1B with reference to the figure 3 and other information provided discuss. Um, so this is discuss for 12. So for a question like that there's going to be um, 8 KIA for evaluation. Uh, note that it says um, strategies and it's price and non-price. So you definitely need to write about, you need a KIA theme about price strategies and you need at least one KAA theme about non-price strategies. Um, for me, I might think about three KAA themes here, so either two price and one non-price, or the other way around, one price, um, two non-price. Um, and then from there, it, it, some evaluation, um, say what it depends on, say why it might not work, those are the easiest ways to score evaluation. So again, what you need to understand is that this is not a points makes prizes question. What you've got to do instead is is write well, uh, construct logic change chains, show uh, detailed um, knowledge of the subject, and make sure that it's also applied in this particular context of Starbucks and coffee bars. So this again is like where you've got to really understand the source material and use it and replay it back to the examiners. So let's have a look at the levels of response mark scheme. Again, you know, if you just write this out, you're in you're just going to end up with level one marks. Um, level one KAA displays isolated or imprecise knowledge and understanding of terms, concepts, theories and models. So again, if you're the type of student that turns up to a lesson, understands it, but never consolidates, leaves the revision too late, uh, goes into the exam not really knowing their stuff, and writes a lot of answers that are Vegasville, Arizona, and it's just all a bit imprecise and general knowledgey, show me the economics, uh, you're in level one. Um, if it's unapplied and generic, you're also in level one. Um, if there's no, if you're making unsubstantiated assertions, you know, if you're just copying out the mark scheme and there's no chains of reasoning, you're also in level one and capped at two out of eight, which is a disaster. To get to level two, you need to um, show elements of knowledge in your answer, understanding of economic principles, concepts and theories. You're able to apply well. Your answer might be a bit narrow, so in this case, you might have only written about um, price strategies or non-price strategies. Uh, to move into level three, you'd have to write about both, so your your answer isn't narrow. Um, level three, this is a student that knows their stuff. They're demonstrating accurate knowledge. It's all applied in context and they're able to produce logical and coherent chains of reasoning. And the, the theories that you've selected are, are absolutely relevant and you've explained it all in that particular context. In terms of the evaluation, there's four marks available. Um, again, so what we've got here is um, a levels of response mark scheme. Um, so if you just write some general uh, stuff that's unapplied and it's generic, um, you're in level one. If you write a few points makes prizes and there's no logic chain, again, you're in level one. Level two evaluation marks uh, to get into that band. It needs to be applied. Your judgments need to be in context and you need to have also have explained those judgments. 
Uh, next question is an eight mark examine question. So we know the score with this. So um, there's going to be two KIA themes worth three marks each. Um, two times three equals six. And then two evaluation marks. Um, so again, if we look at how this is marked, again, the mark scheme is useful here if you were a cheater, which I hope you're not. So um, you, you state a knowledge point that's relevant, you apply it, you analyze it, that's three. You do the same again, knowledge, application, analysis, that's your second lot of three. So you're up to six out of six. And then a little bit of evaluation. So you can either go two ways, you can explain one idea and get two uh, evaluation marks or it could be to throw away bits of generic stuff so um, that's that one and then uh, we get to the extended response which is out of 25 and so it's an essay and uh, you've got a pick you can either pick one from two now this is where the, the question gets um, a little bit interesting in that it's asking you for both micro and macro uh, analysis within your answer. So let's look at um, this in a bit of detail then. So the question is evaluate the micro and macro factors that may influence Starbucks decision whether to expand in a particular country. So in terms of micro what we're looking at here is um, when you're thinking micro you're thinking theme one and theme three so you're thinking about supply and demand analysis you're thinking about market failure you're thinking about theory of the firm diagrams uh, so that's micro macro you're thinking themes two and theme four so your best friend here is ASAD analysis um, in this case probably what I would do is um, write a, a micro KAA uh, immediately evaluate it then write a macro KIA, immediately evaluate it, um, maybe a few conclusions, and you're done. If you do have time, maybe to put a second uh, KIA for either micro or macro and evaluate that, all well and good. Um, looking back at the other questions, um, obviously some of the questions are, are micro in, in nature and others are, are sort of macro and what you've got to do is like kind of suss out which questions about micro and which ones about macro so if we take C this is obviously a micro question because it's about indirect tax so like really really dodgy students will go oh, help help I don't know which questions like micro or macro well my answer to that would be like do some revision you know like for example 1A market structure well that's obviously micro theory of the firm yeah um 1b is also micro so this is quite an unusual question in that both a b and c are, are both they're all micro basically so we then move on with the answer booklet you write your answers in the answer booklet which is really great and there's often more space in the answer booklet than, than is needed. So then you move into the second part of the question, and it's just basically a repeat of the previous question, uh, or in terms of the structure anyway. So you've got some more data. By this time, you're pretty knackered, you know, but you've just got to keep going. Some more charts more text to read through all of it is important um, you really need to understand what's going on so that you can start applying economics to it um, so your answers are applied uh, loads more text loads and loads of text to pile through you've got to be able to do that quickly remember they're budgeting 10 minutes reading time so you need to be a good reader now um, are your reading skills set in stone? No, they're not. Uh, you can improve them. Anybody can get better at reading 
writing and comprehending text. All you need to do is practice. And the best way of practicing is by reading books rather than reading Kim Kardashian's book face account or whatever it is, Instagram. Um, okay, so again, it's exactly the same thing. Um, so 2A is a five mark explain question. Let's see if it's 2 plus 2 plus 1. Let's have a look. Sorry about this. Well, there's one C. Okay, yeah. So this is, yeah, again, so it's two knowledge, two application, two analysis. So quite quite easy in terms of what you have to do there. Um, the next question is an eight mark examine. So that's again two KAA uh, themes and then two throwaway um, bits of evaluation. For each KAA theme, there's one mark of knowledge, one mark of application, and uh, one mark of analysis. Um, so let's. Oh, and then finally, uh, here before we get to the essay, we've got a discuss question, which is worth 12. That's going to be marked according to um, a levels of response mark scheme. Um, so it's going to be an 8 and 4 KAA evaluation split. You've already seen the marking grid for that, so I don't really propose to show you that again. Um, it's exactly the same. Um, so thinking about micro macro split so 2a is about the terms of trade oh I'm not sure if that's about micro or macro well if you're saying that then God help you you know because uh, the terms of trade is a macro concept um, it's a theme for concept um, the next question is about Indonesian rice farmers and you're asked to use a cost and revenue diagram which is part of theme 3 theory of the firm so that's obviously a micro uh, question and then you've got uh, the discuss the benefits of aid to Indonesia um, aid is a theme for macro so this is really a macro question so you can see how paper three it's a mixture of micro and macro uh, and you've just got to know your stuff you now it's just not acceptable to say I can't identify which questions micro and which ones macro if you're saying that, you really need to do some revision because it should be option. If you don't know aid is a macro co uh, topic, um, you need to sort yourself out. If you don't know that, um, you know, a cost and revenue diagram is about the, the theory of the firm, you need to revise that theory of the firm topic. Okay, and then uh, coming towards the end, we've got um, the, the extended essay. Um, so again what you need to do here is um, write a KAA for micro so write something either good diagrams to use might be supply and demand maybe produce a consumer surplus maybe a market failure diagram maybe a theory of the firm diagram so you make a micro KAA point you leave a line you immediately evaluate it by saying writing about um, why it might not work, what the counter arguments, or maybe write about what it might depend on. You then leave a line, then you write uh, a macro KAA. Um, obviously, you know, you can use ASAD uh, for that, or maybe a push, a PPF. Or if it's about labour markets, the exam board have said that if you use a supply and demand diagram, for the labour market, then that can also count as macro KAA um, because you're looking at, uh, um, in this case, the labour market for a whole country, therefore macro. Um, so then, after you've done your macro KAA, you then come up with some evaluation for your macro KAA. Uh, so you say why it might not work or why it might, what it might depend on. Then I'd make some final judgments uh, and, and, and answer the question in a, in a sentence at the end. And that's basically it. Um, I would say this 
this paper's really time pressured and you've got to be excellent at uh, assimilating written and quantitative data quickly um, but you know this is the sort of situation that you might face with selection tests once you've finished at university because in the real world um, people don't have extra time you know extra t how long you take to complete a task in the real world actually matters it matters a lot you know particularly if you know, like trading something if you can understand what's going on quickly um, you can get in before the mar other people the slower players in the market have reacted you know if you're flying a plane for example and something's going wrong and the plane's heading rapidly into the mountain and it's, you can't like say well I need extra time so look what I'm saying here is that um, all of us can improve our uh, reading and comprehension skills uh, but it's not just going to happen um, on its own you're going to have to work hard uh, so that means picking up these weird uh, oblong things called books you might have heard of them or maybe newspapers and magazines and actually reading and um, you need to just do that work and there's no point in procrastinating about it um, you need to just develop those skills and you'll have to develop those skills yourself in your free time that's what students are supposed to do in the sixth form never mind university okay that's all I've got to say about